Honorable uh, Right Reverend Andrew Watson, Bishop of uh, Guildford, uh, Right Honorable uh, Excellency uh, Patricia Scotland, Secretary General of Commonwealth, uh, recipient of Pakistan Civil Award, my friend Dr. James Shera Saab, Sir, Assalamu Alaikum Ji, <coughs> Sir, so good you could come Ji. Members of the Pakistan community, uh, community, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum and very good evening. On behalf of my colleagues and on my own behalf, I extend to you all a very warm welcome to the Pakistan High Commission. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. We have, as you all know, all gathered here this evening to celebrate together with our fellow countrymen and women and our British friends the joyous occasion of Christmas. This Christmas, perhaps more than the Christmas in the past, is a day of soul-searching, reflection and introspection. Ladies and gentlemen, belief in all prophets and respect for them is a fundamental tenet of Islamic faith. For us, Jesus was also a prophet of Islam and his message has universal resonance. In our holy scripture, Jews, Christian, and Muslims are mentioned as the people of the book, part of the same continuum of divine guidance and inspiration. I believe that it is a spirit of solidarity and oneness, of piety and compassion that must animate our approach and outlook towards one another. Ladies and gentlemen, Pakistan was created by a minority to safeguard minorities' rights. Our minorities are equal citizens of Pakistan and have all the rights and freedoms that the Constitution guarantees. The government of Pakistan attaches great importance to safeguard their rights and is committed to protecting their interests. Our goal is to foster within our society an environment of interfaith harmony in which followers of Christianity, Islam, Hinduism and other faiths could live in perfect peace, peace and friendship. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an auspicious coincidence that Christmas coincides with the birthday of the founder of Pakistan, Qaidi Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah. It is through his tireless efforts, exceptional leadership and far-sighted vision that Pakistan became a reality, of course. With enormous sacrifices of all, including the Christians. His vision is well worth remembering. He wanted the state of Pakistan to be a place where its citizens would be free to visit their temples, their mosques, their churches. Where they belonging to any religion, caste or creed would have no bearing on the business of the state. Following Pakistan's independence, the Pakistani Christian community has made remarkable contribution to social sector development in Pakistan, evident in the building of educational institutions, hospitals and health facilities throughout the country. Darul Sukum, 
a home for children with mental and physical disabilities, Mary Adelaide's Leprosy Center, Ida Rio School for the Blind, Deaf, and Dumb, St. Teresa Nursing Home, and the plethora of missionaries, colleges, and educational institutions. Dotting Pakistan are the shining beacon of light and hope. When he articulated his vision for a new homeland, the Christian community became one of the Kai's ardent supporters. The leaders of the church in Punjab fully endorsed the concept of Pakistan and advised community members to move to Pakistan when it would come into existence. Joshua Fazaldeen, a Christian intellectual and proponent of the, of the Pakistan movement, wrote newspaper articles to promote Jinnah's vision. His passionate support of a separate homeland in his writing won the heart of Chaudhary Rahmat Ali uh, when many Muslim leaders were thinking that it was an impractical notion. The first editor of Daily Dawn, appointed by Mr. Jinnah, was Mr. Pothan Joseph. The heroic contribution of the Christian community and other minorities to Pakistan defense are equally commendable. People like famous Pakistan Air Force pilot, Air Vice Marshal Eric Gordon, Sisad Chaudhary, and Peter O'Reilly, Marshal Wing Commander Melvin Middlecourt, who won the Sitarai Jurat are a few of the shining examples of the sacrifices made by the Christian community for the defense of Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, shared historical experiences and cultural linkages between Pakistan and the UK encourage the 1.6 million British Pakistani diaspora in the UK to act as a fulcrum of our abiding friendship. In areas of trade, investment, development, health and education, there remains tremendous prospect for growth. Equally important, we face common challenges. Climate change is as much an existential threat to the UK as to Pakistan. After unprecedented rainfall left a third of the country submerged, Pakistan, as well as other countries dealing with the consequences of climate change, require our help and support. It is a matter of satisfaction and a mark of our friendship that UK and its people contributed generously towards the relief effort. A lot has been done and a lot remains to be accomplished. We look to continued support from the UK and its people as Pakistan rebuilds a more climate resilient future. As the year comes to a close, we must not lose sight of the issues discussed at the COP27. Brothers and sisters, on this festive occasion, let us not forget those living with pain and suffering particularly those who have been victims of natural disasters in Pakistan and elsewhere. Let us not forget in our prayers the victims of war, the refugees, the homeless and the helpless. I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. May the New Year bring new hope, peace happiness for all mankind. Thank you so much.